Before we begin, I would like to announce that I will be attending the 63rd Annual Convention of the American Society of Dowsers, June 8th through June 11th, being held at the State University of New York Adirondack Campus in beautiful Queensbury, New York. The convention will feature dowsing demonstrations and speakers, a metaphysical expo and dowsing bookstore, a wellness center, and much, much more. The Queensbury campus is only 45 minutes north of Albany International Airport, and affordable on-campus housing is available. For more information and to register for this unique event, please visit www.dowsers.org. And now for today's podcast. Welcome to High Vibes with your host, Bill G. At High Vibes, we're looking into what it means to be a fourth dimensional being in an ever-changing world. We hope that by listening to our podcast, you can feel a greater sense of peace and connection as we collectively raise our energetic vibration to the next level. And now for today's podcast. Hello and welcome to High Vibes. I'm your host, Bill G, and today's special guest is Tara Magowski. As the founder of Divine Lifestyles, Tara is a certified holistic counselor, a CHHC and AADP, a board certified and accredited member of the American Association of Drugless Practitioners, a speaker and event producer. After years of working at ABC Studios, Goldman Sachs, the NFL for Super Bowl 51, and Music Cares, which is a nonprofit arm of the Grammys, Tara has been called to relaunch Divine Lifestyles. For Tara, Divine Lifestyles is neither a job nor a career. It's a spiritual commitment and a vocation. It's a soulful journey and a way of life. From sacred gatherings, soulful products, nutrition, virtual programming, and transformational breathwork, they empower you to ground, to dive inward, breathe deeply, live healthy, realize your true self, and heal. So, Tara, welcome to the show, and I'm very anxious to learn more about this Divine Lifestyles Collective that you're launching. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, okay, we're getting right into it. <laughs> so um, Divine Lifestyles Collective is a three-month container that I'm launching um, soon, um, but it's going to be a global digital uh, digital wellness collective and community of seekers. And we're curating purposeful, transformative experiences and exclusive programming that speaks directly to your spirit, mind, and body. And the mission with this is to bring together different uh, facilitators and healers from all over the world and make holistic health and healing accessible to all. So we're going to do this by giving people access to cutting edge health and wellness resources, amazing soulful products life-changing workshops, virtual programming, and also access to my transformational retreats. So um, yeah, so that's what we're doing. So I'm putting this together and putting together the programming now. We have a wait list so people can go over to my website at divinelifestyles.com, learn more about all of the benefits of joining the collective. And um, I'll let you know when we release the date to open the doors. Cool. That sounds exciting. So, all right. There's a lot to that package. When you say a um, a three month capsule, so I'm I'm interested in joining up for this thing. What what can I expect out of this as a as a person who is going to uh, participate in the program? A lot. Um, <laughs> so. We have uh, exclusive access to the private community platform for encouragement, support, and guidance. We're going to be having weekly educational virtual programming, access to the recordings hosted in the private community platform. So those will live evergreen and people will be able to have access to that forever. Um, an opportunity, of course, to connect with experts in the field of wellness and healing. 
And then I'm offering people within this container, um, Per, uh, preferential rates for any in-person events that I do. And I usually do about monthly events and I do some retreats once the weather gets nicer here at my home in Lake Mahopak, which I'd love to talk to you more about. And then of course, anyone who's in the container gets access to early access to my retreats and all of my workshops and gatherings that I do outside of the container for a discounted price. Um, also discounts to preferred and vetted wellness practitioners much like yourself. So if you wanted to partner with a collective, you'd come in, unlimited wellness resources, you know, daily doses of inspiration, accountability, and so a supportive community. And of course, lots of access to me. So personalized one-on-one -on -one time Q and A's. Um, I focus primarily, my specialties are nutrition, hormonal health, um, and sound alchemy and breath work. And then of course, if you join the collective, people are going to have access to the archive recordings as it grows. So, um, there's a wonderful platform that I've set up. So it's exciting. Yeah, it's about true. to launch. We're almost there. <laughs> wow. Uh, so what is the brainchild to this thing? You spent some time in the entertainment industry and then you were in the finance industry and then and so you did a lot of work with various um you would i guess you would call um high profile industry and so what yeah. got you from that into alternative wellness wow okay so that's a long story but i'll give you um so i started out my career in television. I started out in ABC Studios. So I was my first job outside of college. And I, I just knew that I wanted to work in entertainment. I studied acting as well. So, you know, entertainment was easy for me. I lived in New York City. There was a lot of cool things going on. So that's how I started my career. And then I was doing both. I was working in television. And as television goes, you work on different projects, you know, a show goes on hiatus, you go from one project to the next project, or you have some time off in between projects, maybe a month or two. So that's where I decided to go back to school um, for acting and study that. So it was, you know, working in television and then also trying to audition to be in front of the camera. And I was doing that. For about let's say five or six years in Manhattan after college. And then when I was 27, my mother passed away. And she passed away quite suddenly. She passed away by um, a combination of medications in her sleep. And that was a big, big awakening in my life where I you know, I was starting to just contemplate everything. What am I doing in the world? Is this even the path I should be going down? Everyone is so superficial in this industry, um, you know, in the entertainment industry. I really want to do more with my life. So that was the catalyst. I had been struggling with my health and nutrition during the grief and depressive time that I was going through after my mother's death. And I decided to go back to school and study nutrition. And I went to IIN, which is the School of International Integrative Nutrition. And I, from there, I learned a lot about how to kind of heal myself naturally. That was the beginning for me of learning how foods, how your mindset, how, you know, your daily practices. I was starting to learn all these lifestyle tips and tools of how to really combat all these negative emotions that I was navigating. So that was the beginning of the catalyst. That was quite some time ago now. Um, and that was always something, and I launched Divine Lifestyles 1.0. When I was a baby, I was, you know, 29. And I thought that I knew what I was doing. And I launched my company. And I was, I was, I was, you know, I was 
I was teaching people how to lose weight. I was doing a lot of wellness, um, different sort of wellness events. And that's kind of how it all started. And then as life would, would show up, you know, being in the entertainment industry as well, you have a lot of opportunities that, that come around, you know, you're always meeting people that are like go-getters and hustlers. So as I was building out my business, I was still getting offers to do a lot of live shows and, you know, a lot of live shows, they're super fun and they're project based. So I was doing both for, for a very long time. And, um, I even ended up, you know, working in finance, but it was all using the very same skill set because when I was working at Goldman Sachs, I was still using my event producer hat. I was working in a division with an incubator where it was a lot of startups and I was helping running the programming for the startups and getting facilitators and speakers to come in. So um, although I've had many different experiences, they've all um, they've all kind of been the same skill set, if that makes sense. I'm a producer at heart, whether I'm producing a TV show, a podcast, an event, or um, a learning series at Goldman Sachs. So yeah, that was kind of the evolution and the journey. And, you, you know, living in Manhattan for 18 years, I, um, you kind of need to have your hands in a lot of hats. So you need to wear, I mean, your hands in a lot of pots and wear a, a lot of hats because it's very expensive and you need to kind of hustle. So I did that. And it wasn't until COVID when, you know, we all got sent home. I was still working at Goldman Sachs. And we all got sent home. My husband and I had just bought a house one hour outside of the city in Lake Mahopak. And that's when my life transformed again. And I decided that I wasn't going to go back to corporate America. And I was going to relaunch Divine Lifestyles and be very, very curated in the offerings um, and really go back to the core of what I love. And that's creating these sacred gatherings and being able to bring people together and coordinate and facilitate these transformational experiences. So obviously you've got a lot of event planning chops here. So you've got, you, so I, I can imagine that with the, the combination of the entertainment and, and because I find that when organizing events, it's a lot like organizing any kind of show or any kind of entertainment. There's beats, there's, you know, you, you gotta hit your, you gotta hit your marks every single time in order to have a cohesive event. Because when you, uh, we've all attended events where there is these, you know, what we call dead air, you know, there, mm -hmm. we have that in the, in, in a podcast too. Whenever I end up with dead air on my podcast, I'd edit that out because we, I don't like it. Dead air loses people's attention and you can have dead air in a an event as well of course so i'm i'm very curious to see to experience one of your events uh, but for the benefit of the people who are listening who never attended one of your events can we an overall uh feeling of first of all how long is the event how many you know how many days is the event and what is the um what is the transformational story the arc of the experience I yes think the is art of the, yeah the, yeah and, and mm -hmm. i like to think, think of it as a story too you know you come mm -hmm. in you're curious your first act is your your introduction to the characters your second yeah. act is the introduction of the the work and then the third act is your resolution and i'm, I'm curious to know what is um what is that experience like yeah, well, you know, it's interesting because every single gathering is quite different and unique. But if you, you know, if anyone is listening, goes to my website, you can kind of see what I've done there is under sacred gatherings. I've I've outlined kind of, you know, pictures and videos and also kind of a blurb of like what people have come for. So we did a few different retreats. I also do healing circles. So it really depends. We did an, an autumn equinox retreat where we started at my home. 
um, which this property in Lake Mahopac is very, very special. Um, we have two private islands in the middle of the lake that you can only get to via boat. And this land was um, the native Algonquin Indian ceremonial lands. So it has a lot of potent <laughs> energy and it's a portal in itself. So what we, we've started usually at my home and we'll just really connect with all of the elements because that's very important to me is that really submerse ourselves in the nature, learn a little bit about the land. It depends on the programming that what we're doing for the day, but I have a yurt. So I usually do some programming, start off with some movement, some yoga, and we usually end up in the yurt for some sort of meditation and breath work and sound alchemy. Then we'll have different practitioners come in, depending on what it is. We are um, our theme for that particular, uh, particular event. Um, or experience. And then I'll take people on the lake and we'll actually go into the campsite grounds and actually go either hiking or we'll have lunch out there. Usually have our uh, medicine drum circle out there, a little singing by the fire, journaling, things of that nature. So it usually flows a bit like that. Come back to my home. And again, if we're having lunch here, we would have it here, but it really depends. I like to switch it up. I always like to try new things. I don't want anyone who's come to one of my experiences to feel like it's monotonous and it's like the same thing over and over. So I'm always looking for new ways. I mean, there's some elements that are always there, the breathwork, meditation, movement, um, intention setting, a closing fire ceremony. I always have those elements. Um, but yeah, it changes based on the audience and kind of based on what, where we are in the season and what I feel is kind of moving through me, what needs to be expressed through, through the experience. And everyone has different experiences. You know, everyone has a different, um, reaction, or, um, you know, take away based on where they are, what they're going through, but really a, this, it's about creating that community and being able to create a space and oasis for people to come a safe place where they can ground, look inward, have some space and quiet time away from their day to day and start asking themselves the harder questions, or at least start asking questions. And then a lot of times we just see where it takes us. Sounds really, really cool. And so when people are, are participating in this, um, do they usually stay in hotels? Do they stay in your home or how, how do, how do people immerse themselves into the experience? So I've done days. And so I have a cottage on my property that has two bedrooms. And then in my house, I have some rooms, but I only open that to people that are like closest to me. Um, so for anything overnight, there's an Airbnb two doors down. <laughs> so I've used that Airbnb and the cottage on the property. And I've also had people stay in the yurt. The yurt is um, quite beautiful, um, can fit about 25 people, not to sleep, um, like sitting and, you know, even lying down in a nice circle, but I've had people um, sleep there as well, you know, set up a few um, comfortable areas. So yeah, I'm all, I'm all for people pitching tents in my yard. <laughs> awesome. So can you give me an example of a uh, a story. Tell me a story about a participant who came to one of your events and what were they seeking? What were they expecting? And what did they take out of the experience? Well, I would say one of my, she's more like a regular client of mine. Now I met her through my retreats. She was, you know, suffering from a divorce and really a lot of, um, you know, I don't want to <clears throat> speak too much about it, but 
self-worth, you know, all the things that you go through when, when you're facing, um, a heartbreak and what she got was, you know, a lot of community. And also I work with her privately. So she was able to take a lot of the tools that she learned through the meditations, the breath work, um, and really she's, she's on her way now. It's beautiful. She's like this little butterfly and I'm watching her blossom. She comes to every one of my events. Um, I'll be seeing her at my aroma yoga flow coming up, um, on February 11th. And she's just ready to do the work. And I mean, you'd have to ask her, I mean, (laughs) uh, you'd have to ask her. I mean, from what I've seen is that she is feeling more confident, more grounded, more aligned. Um, and really she's in a place now where she's starting to uncover the root, the root of, of the, this, um, you know, the unworthiness, the root of, of not treating herself well and looking after looking to the wrong men. So she's starting to really start connecting the dots. And that to me is for me, what I do is I just create a space. I don't, you know, everyone else does the work. I create the space where people can be authentically, unapologetically themselves. They do the work. I just create the space. So I imagine that it was a, it was a challenging journey for her because I can, I've I've had clients of my own who have gone through very difficult situations and, you know, we've all gone through very challenging things ourselves and finding that, um, finding and loving the shadow i find is the one of the major aspects of healing it's the the acknowledge first the acknowledgement acknowledgement that you have a shadow and then Mm -hmm. it's the exploration of it and the the building of the love for it because Mm -hmm. only when you are embrace it and love that and you can actually allow it to release i'm gonna read you something that i was just reading reading in an amazing book by Jeffrey Wands. And it says, confront the dark parts of yourself and work to banish them with illumination and forgiveness. Your willingness to wrestle with your demons will cause your angels to sing It's by August Wilson. And so I just loved the way that that, you know, quantifies shadow work. And really being able to look at the darkest parts of of oneself. And also, I think it's about forgiving. For me, it's a lot about forgiveness, acknowledging, okay, that's there. And then forgiving yourself. And right before we went live, we were just talking about something that I'd love to bring up as an example. My father just recently passed. And, you know, the what ifs I could have done better. I could have done more or I may have put him in a situation, you know, doing radiation and kind of those what ifs and feeling shame or guilt around that. It's okay. Like, let's acknowledge that as a full expression of all of my emotions, especially during the uh, grief process. And then saying, you know what, just like you said, you did what you could do at the time. It's like, if you knew better, you would do better. You you made a decision with the information you had at that time. So I find that me as well as a lot of people, there's a we do that to ourselves. It's this this constant, oh, I could have done this, I should have done this, I could have done this. It's like, but you didn't, and that's not the way it was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And really accepting that, you know, letting go and not trying to control and just letting that go and saying, you know what? It is what it is. And I forgive myself for making the best decision that I could at the time. Yeah. And then and at that point, there's really, you learn that there's really nothing to forgive, you know, because yes, you've made it, made an error. You are, and we find this a lot, even with uh, medical decisions we've made. Uh, for yeah. example, my, a few years ago, my wife, uh, they discovered that she had a, a tumor on her uh, thyroid and they were like, oh, this is thyroid's got to go. Because, you know, if that thing goes cancer, you're going to be dead in weeks. So you, that thing, you got to take it out. And so we, with the information that we had, we went ahead, got the surgery done. And now she's dependent on thyroid medication for the rest of her life. And 
several years later, you know, as she was doing research for another client of hers, when as an acupuncturist, she discovered that there were some what, things that she could have done differently that where she would have not have needed to go through the surgery, or maybe she had other options that she didn't explore because she didn't know what those exp- those options were. Well, okay. The thyroid's gone. <laughs> it's not like we can then turn back time and say, okay, now put it back because now I have a better option. You have what you have in front of you at the time and you make the best decision you have. And then for, it's it's not even so much about forgiveness. It's about just knowing that you did your best and you came from a place of love for the person that you were caring for, even if that person was for yourself. And then, and then in that space, forgiveness is automatic because there's nothing to forgive. It's interesting. When you say that, it makes me think of my husband and I's dynamic. And I can tell like you're a numbers guy, you're a linear thinker. And I always have this conversation with my husband. It's like, he would probably say what you just said. There's nothing to forgive, right? He would probably agree with you. And then there's, you know, me over here that just moves through the world very differently, right? My feminine energy and the way I kind of view the world is very different. And that's beautiful. But I always feel that when we have some sort of trauma that is around a decision or whatever, especially your father's death, I I feel that forgive forgiveness is something that I needed to move through because I was his healthcare proxy, his power of attorney. Uh, you know, he had stage four brain cancer. So I'm making all decisions on behalf of his health because he really wasn't in a position to make them for himself. So even though it is just as easy as you said, and it's very, very logical and I understand it, It may not be realistic for me moving through all of these emotions that I'm navigating with the grief to just, you know, say that it's, no, I had to do a lot of forgiveness. I had to really, I had to say, you've done the best you can do, Tara, forgive yourself. You've, and maybe that's just the feminine energy or the female in me, but Yes, I had to walk through forgiveness and acceptance and letting go. I had to go through all of it yeah. um, and be oh, yeah. kinder and well, to myself. Yeah. yeah, and that was my point, is that once you're through the forgiveness, once you've gone through the walk, yes. that's when you realize that there was nothing to forgive in the first place. That's what I, That was my point, is that okay. when as you were going through, before you go through the forgiveness stage, Yes, there's a lot to forgive. There's a lot to yeah. there's, a, there's a lot to deal with, and that that's and that's that shadow coming out again. The what ifs, the what could I have done differently? Oh my God, I made the mo- mo- worst mistake I could have possibly been. I m- could make, I, you know, I killed this person or whatever. All the all that stuff that comes. Oh yeah, all that stuff goes through your head. Oh God, yes. And oh, so, yeah. but and like that, I'm it, God, <laughs> right. And so your my so the point that I'm making here is that once you've walked through that fire, mm-hmm. that's when you discover and you've forgiven, then you discover, oh, well, there was nothing to forgive in the first place. And it was your process. The forgiveness mm-hmm. was your process. It was part of that healing yes. process. Yes. And um, and it's great that your retreats provide that environment, a safe environment, a, a, an environment that is away from people's lives. I mean, anyone who has gone on retreat can relate to this. And people who have never been on retreat before sometimes are like, oh, well, why can't I just do this at home like for 10 minutes or or just you know watch mm-hmm. a video and, and go through this? There's something very special about going into retreat. And some people go into retreat or they go into like silent retreat and they go to these places where they don't talk for a week. And those are, if anybody here has gone on a silent retreat, 
knows that those are hell because when you do not talk and you don't give voice to that inner dialogue or that need to connect mm-hmm. with other people and tell them your yeah. story, that is painful. Yeah. And if you're going through a process that's like walking through fire for forgiveness process you're going through, it can be a very necessary catalyst for you to go through in order to have that to get to that other side, because that's where you want to be. You want to be on that other side. And we can unicorn and rainbow and whatever, create a wonderful experience is all we want. It's not the wonderful experience that facilitates the healing. It's the walking through the fire that 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 facilitates the healing. Yeah. It's going in and, and facing those inner demons and also insecurities and anxieties and you know like you said walking in diving inward doing the work so you can come out on the other side of it and too often in the western medical model they'll throw drugs at it or they'll throw some kind of medication at it to relieve you of the symptoms but by relieving you of the symptoms you're only making the you're only prolonging the agony whereas Sometimes, especially if you're going through a very challenging experience in your life, like a divorce, like a the death of a child or something like that, you really do need to take that time and go into retreat. Otherwise, Mm -hmm. you're going to all you're doing is you're holding on to that grief longer and refusing to deal with it. And if you decide to medicate it. Yes, I understand. Sometimes medications are necessary, especially if you, to keep you from jumping off the cliff. But eventually you're going to have to put that down and you're going to have mm-hmm. to deal with your crap in order to get to the other side. Because we all want to be on that other side. We all want to be in that rainbow. We all, we all, oh, yeah, I'm all I'm all healed now. I'm all wonderful. You got to walk through the fire first. And sometimes that it's more than one journey. It's not just, oh, I'm going to go to this, you know, three-day retreat and I'm going to come back and I'm going to be healed. You may have just discovered that you've just begun that work. Oh, absolutely. That's usually the best ones. Uh, you realize, oh, I'm just scratching the surface on a new perspective or a new, a new layer that I didn't know was there. So you I'm know? very excited to, um, number one, learn more about your retreats and number two, hopefully be able to, um, be yeah, a, a guest one. at one of your retreats. I think that would be absolutely wonderful. And so let's uh, remind everybody again where to uh, where they can go to find out more about your retreats and just get really fired up about walking through the fire. <laughs> uh, that is divinelifestyles.com or people can reach out to me on Instagram and that is at Tara Magalski. And I've linked out Divine Lifestyles Retreats and Divine Lifestyles through there. Excellent. So and, the, can... and the link is going is also in the show notes. And so again, Tara, thank you so much for sharing with us your experience and also sharing your fire, you know, sharing the, yeah. the, 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 your process as you're going through it. I think your journey is unique and very, very fascinating and relatable. You're, the future people who are going to come to your retreats and to experience what you have to give is are going to really, really benefit from it. Thank you. I am. Um, I'm happy that I was able to share it and I will be talking a little bit more. I feel called to be talking more about this recent fire because it was so different from the first fire meaning my mother's death to 16 years later, my father's, and I was able to be there to help my father transition. So I do think that, um, two, two gifts, um, two, two gifts for sure. There was a lot of, um, a lot of beauty in both, both, um, both of these, um, circumstances. So I would love to share more about that. So if you, if anyone who's listening is interested, I will be um, launching my podcast again. Um, I'm going to be doing a podcast reboot. So I'm going to be kind of diving into the fire and talking a little bit more about my process. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And, And thank you everybody out there for listening. And we will see you next time. 
Thank you for listening. For more information about Bill and Nina G, please go to www.vitalbioenergetics.com. See you next time.